know, I watch an unholy amount of far left content for this channel. The things I've seen, man. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night with a cold sweat, seeing, for a fleeting moment, the shadow of Riley Dennis at the foot of my bed. The halls of Drunken Uncle Towers echo with Anita Sarkeesian's claims that everything is sexist, racist, and homophobic. And you have to point them all out. So it's nice to take a break every now and then to watch a real academic at work. Take it away, Lily. My name is Lily. Oh, well, hello, Lily. Growing up, I was exposed to many people who were different than me. My parents are white, straight, cisgender, middle class, and both from Iowa. Oh, no, you poor thing having straight white cis parents. As if that was going to be a fucking surprise to us since you are white and you fucking exist. But no, you poor thing. Why didn't your father turn gay and your mum turn black so you could live in a more diverse household? The same goes for most of my extended family. However, they have always been active about social justice causes and fostered my own education about issues of racism and sexism. Oh shit! Seriously, you poor thing! You didn't stand a chance, did you? My parents made certain the media I consumed was diverse. You say that, but you mean watching Barney the Dinosaur because it had a kid with a hearing aid in it, don't you? Your parents weren't switching you between the Disney Channel and CNN and then a video of a beheading before going back to cartoons, because that would be diverse. But to be fair, 15 years ago, diverse meant Hey Arnold having a black best mate. You have to remember, only like five years before that, the black Power Ranger was black, the white one was white, and the yellow one was Asian. Different times, Lily. My parents encouraged me to watch television and movies and read books about characters who don't look or live their lives like me. But that could mean anything from Batman to Mein Kampf. Are you deliberately being vague? This is an academic essay. I thought you were supposed to give examples, reference things. At least according to the University of Leicester, link is in the bibliography. I mean description. However, my education at home and in school was devoid of messages beyond diversity is good. I don't know what you wanted from them, really. Their job is to teach you the curriculum, not lecture you on the life lessons laid out in the show My Wife and Kids. It's your parents' job to raise you to be what they figure is a good person. For me, it was less about diversity and more stop throwing stones at those kids. I was unaware of the vast historical injustices and social inequalities that permeate the United States. Yeah, but they're historical, so really, I mean, there's no point in bitching about them, is there? You're always gonna find issues if you keep looking back. I fucking hate it when someone brings up some long abolished laws if it's proof that it's still going on now. Like, oh, you know, 500 years ago, a man could beat his wife if she nagged him too much. This is why we need feminism. I was also oblivious to the role I, as a white person, play in perpetuating oppression. Oh, fuck off! Unless you're a steaming racist, shut the fuck up! You haven't contributed at all! Fucking hell, I swear, YouTube is powered by white guilt. More and more people are getting sick and fucking tired of being told they're inherently part of the problem solely because of the colour of their skin, and that is why the ad revenue is fucked. White guilt, man, it feasts on it. My true social justice education. Gonna change the setting just like that, eh? No warning, no explanation. You don't even look at the camera and say, I'm sitting down now. That's a bad choice too. You've created roles that make you look like the daughter of the Michelin man. Actually, no, I'll take that back. You look like the daughter of two social justice warriors. You're the epitome of it. Just nothing going for you in the slightest. This is why these people say they're trans. Otherwise, all they are is this. The one I lacked growing up and in high school began when I joined the Western Kentucky University forensics team. Sounds cool, right? Like some CSI shit. Nah, I looked it up and it's a fucking debate club. If this is where Lily got her social justice education, maybe she should have debated back a bit. Kinda hard though when you're being told to shut up and listen because someone with dark skin is talking and therefore they know more about this subject than you do. I'm worried for debate clubs. The forensics team at WKU is made up of a diverse group of students who speak passionately about the issues that impact them and their communities. That's a bit of a shit debate club then, isn't it? You're supposed to be able to argue absolutely anything. Fuck, I would have killed if they had them in my country back in the day. I mean, I would have actually killed someone, beat them to death with their own notes. I don't do well with facts. I'm more of a creatively call you a cunt kind of guy. They still don't have clubs for that. And they do so in an intersectional way. 
How though? Don't just say it and move on. This is an academic essay, Lily. You're not going to pass this module. I can tell. Your work so far is lackluster. Your presentation skills leave a lot to be desired. And quite frankly, you're boring me with your monotonous babbling on a subject of which you seem to be only half informed. Though I will be re-watching this video anytime I have trouble sleeping or need reminding that no matter what happens, at least I don't look like that. It was while watching my teammates speak that I began to grasp the complex and connected ways in which oppression functions. It's pretty simple, actually. You oppress someone, you keep them subjugated and suppressed. Anything else, well, it's not oppression. There isn't some tangled web where pulling on one of the threads causes a tsunami in Milo Stewart's pants. We have equal rights in the West, except maybe females to males, but that's a whole nother essay. I also had the opportunity I'm standing up now to take a course entitled Introduction to Social Justice by Dr. Judy Rohr. It is not an exaggeration to say that class changed my life. Yeah, and not in the good way, I bet. While you were blissfully ignorant of all the social injustices, you were also happy. Now you see sexual objectification in billboards and in ads, racism in the media, sexism in tourism and fucking cave paintings, I don't know. You guys have got getting offended down to a fine fucking art. I can't even begin to replicate it. You actually get offended at history. You're fucking mental. Dr. Rohr taught me not only what intersectionality is, but why it's so important. Are we gonna have to go to her for a fucking explanation on what it is then? Because I'm starting to think you haven't got a clue. In January of this year, I attended the Women's March in Washington, D.C. Oh, for fuck's sake. Still nothing on intersectionality, though. Is this an essay on what you did during the break? Are we going to get details on how your butch mum and cuckold dad took you out for ice cream afterwards because you were a good girl and shouted misogynistic Nazi scum at a burning effigy of Trump? Every feminist video leads back to Trump nowadays. You can't get away from it. They need him like night needs day. There, I had the opportunity to listen to the preeminent intersectional activists and thinkers of the day speak on issues ranging from progress for trans individuals to the crime of mass incarceration. Wait, of who? Of criminals? I'm pretty down with that, to be honest. I should think the prospect of the consequences is all that stops some people from going savage. And what are you going to do with all the people guilty of the crime of mass incarceration? Put them in jail? Think it through. While the march and its participants were not perfect, listening to Janet Mock, Angela Davis, Linda Sarsour, and Tamika Mallory- Oh, so you can reference people then, but not fucking anything else? Worst essay ever! Demonstrated to me what truly intersectional feminism looks like, and its immense power. Yeah, immensely powerful bullshit. There was no argument to this. I thought you were a member of the Western Kentucky University forensic team. If that's the kind of standards they taught you, get your fucking money back, princess. What was their motto? Listen and believe? Fucking member of a debate club and all you do is listen to people speak and write about it afterwards. If you put in some quotes and took them out of context, you'd be a journalist. Thanks for watching, guys. Please consider becoming a patron to keep this channel running during these dark times, the link is in the description. And remember, debating a feminist and losing is a fair fight. Debating a feminist and winning, well, that's just oppressive.